coming up next. We need Trump! We need Trump! Donald Trump rallies supporters at Penn State, and another visit is coming this week. Plus, why Pennsylvania is so important in this year's presidential election. Pennsylvania has decided every election for the last few election cycles. And a very different and fluffier kind of student is learning on campus. The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Antonio Fondacaro. And I'm Grace Eckerly. Thanks for joining us for the Center County Report. Our top story, Election Day, is just one week away from today and all eyes are on Pennsylvania. Jordan Spagnoli looks at the importance of this swing state. Pennsylvania is not only a key swing state in the presidential race, but some experts say PA could hold the key to the whole election. But Pennsylvania, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala that you've had enough. Trump not showing up, um, refused to be a part of a CNN debate, and Clearly his staff has been saying he's exhausted, and the sad part about that is he's trying to be president of the United States. Both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris targeted the state heavily in recent weeks. Recent polling has both candidates within just a few points of each other in the margin of error. Trump campaigned in State College at a late October rally. We're going to end the looting and the pillaging of Pennsylvania. We will bring back our manufacturing jobs our energy jobs, our coal jobs, our steel jobs, and we're going to bring back our dreams. Kamala Harris has appeared across the state, including in Philadelphia. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. And I think that the American people deserve to have a president who is grounded in what is common sense, what is practical, and what is in the best interest of the people, not themselves. Pennsylvania's election prize is 19 electoral votes up for grabs. Historically, those votes carry a heavy weight. 77 percent of the winners in the last 31 America presidential elections again. have won PA, and in a close race like this year, every vote matters. Back in 2022, there was a Republican primary for the U.S. Senate, and the difference between Dr. Oz and Dave McCormick, uh, who was the runner-up and is now our Senate nominee, was a little over 900 votes. So if you think your vote doesn't matter, that's a very real, very recent example of where every single vote counts. Pennsylvania's House Speaker Joanna McClinton says PA has played a critical role for many presidential elections. Pennsylvania has decided every election for the last few election cycles. When we think about President Biden's victory, uh, victorious election in 2020, uh, Pennsylvania was the key, the keystone state. Uh, our former President Trump's victory in 2016, Pennsylvania was the key. Uh, and our President Obama's victories in 2008 and 2012. As Pennsylvania goes, the nation goes. After the candidates spent millions of dollars on ads here trying to convince voters, it's now in the hands of the voters. In State College, I'm Jordan Spagnoli for the Center County Report. The latest polling average from 538 shows virtually a tie in Pennsylvania, with Trump ahead by three-tenths of one point, well within the margin of error. And Donald Trump is heading back to State College for the second time in a week. His first appearance was at a campaign rally on Saturday at the BJC that drew thousands of supporters. We need Trump! Thousands turned out at the Bryce Jordan Center over the weekend for a campaign rally by former President Donald Trump. Enthusiastic fans waved flags and cheered as the Republican nominee took the stage, promising again to bring back America's greatness. Despite Center County voting blue in 2020, nothing is stopping Trump's coalition from starting a rally at Penn State. Supporters from around the state college area showed up, including younger voters and Penn State students. The stakes are pretty high because as somebody who's a senior in college, I want to be able to afford a house when I graduate. And the way this economy is going, I don't know if we can. Many supporters highlight the economy as a major issue drawing them toward Trump. Even some people from outside the U.S. were there, like Yutaka Usami from Japan, who told us Trump is popular there, but that some news coverage of him there, in his opinion, is unfair. Fake media doesn't report reality. They report fake. <laughs> so many persons misunderstand 
not everyone at the event was a Trump supporter. George Sedigian urged Trump voters to think critically about their choices. Just because Trump and his enablers, the MAGA movement, have left our traditional Republican values doesn't mean I have. We need to pull the sheepskin off the wolf. And that's what I'm here to do, to expose his lies. Trump will be back in town this Saturday, attending the Penn State, Ohio State football game. The university says Trump was invited to Saturday's game as a private guest, and he'll be in a suite at Beaver Stadium. Now, the day of the Trump rally also came with a protest against his visit in State College. Reporter Isabella Cahill has that story. Even before Donald Trump arrived at the Bryce Jordan Center for his campaign rally, dozens of anti-Trump supporters took to the streets of State College, carrying signs and chanting. The group moved throughout downtown and eventually towards the BJC. I'm standing where the protest happened in result of the Trump rally that was happening up there. They were handing out pamphlets that read, no Trump, no KKK, no fascist NPA. Many wore masks to hide their faces and most would not give out their names for interviews. One protester who identified himself as Matt, a Penn State grad student, talked about his motives for attending. You know, I think it's distasteful that he's coming here uh, to a place of uh, higher education, that sort of thing. The protest started out calm, but later turned physical. The protesters getting in a Trump supporter's face as they try to walk through and calling out non-protesters. In State College, I'm Isabella Cahill for the Center County Report. There's a new election lawsuit in our state. Republicans have asked the U.S. Supreme Court for an emergency order in Pennsylvania to block counting of some provisional ballots. The court is being asked to step into a dispute over ballots cast by voters whose mail ballots are rejected for not following technical procedures in state law. The state high court ruled that election officials must count provisional ballots cast by voters whose ballots were voided because they arrived without mandatory secrecy envelopes. In the meantime, the deadline to submit your application for a mail-in ballot is today. People around the world are watching this presidential race very closely. Reporter Eric Morris was part of our Penn State journalism team that traveled to the UK recently. He has more on what people there think of the US election. On the streets of London and Edinburgh, most people will tell you they're keeping a close eye on the US election. I think it's like often the top news story every single day, which I actually kind of think is frustrating. And it doesn't matter if they're older or younger. I know about Project 2025, like we, we know about those things here and we're like, okay, that's a terrible news for the climate and for all, people all over the world because what the US does obviously impacts us. For Europe, what happens in America matters. 400 million Europeans can't vote in the US election, but it's still an election they have to really care about. And so that's why you're seeing as much coverage as you are. Mark Landler is the London bureau chief of the New York Times. Everyone in Europe understands that the outcome of the US election will have direct consequences for them. The British held their own major election in July, with the voters overwhelmingly tossing the conservative Tories out of office for the first time in 14 years, and giving the more liberal Labour Party a landslide win. But two political experts told us Labour received the lowest percentage of the vote for a winning party since the Second World War. So there's a question there really, is it, a, is it an election that Labour won or is it an election that the Conservatives lost? And in many respects it is an election that the Conservatives lost. They went back to, to the Labour Party, but they went back to the Labour Party not really out of a great deal of enthusiasm, but just out of, of um, a sense of disappointment and in some, some degree uh, real disappointment. They say it's a part of a global anti-incumbent feeling by voters. The big theme globally is kind of throw the bums out. That's what voters all over the world in many different countries, different political systems, there's this kind of general pent up frustration. It's a frustration many say is also building here at home. But after President Joe Biden dropped out of the race, that anti-incumbent flavor has a different taste in the U.S. I think if Biden had not withdrawn when he did, the election in the U.S. would have shaped up as a much more straight anti-incumbent election. For Kamala Harris, you slightly remove the incumbent flavor from it. 
Historically, the two nations have parallels with election results including Bill Clinton and Tony Blair in the 90s, as well as Donald Trump and Boris Johnson. So, what can we learn in 2024? I think that the Democrats are, are trying to do some of the same things. And so to that extent, I think that the labor victory gives them something of a blueprint. The lesson? They promised voters they'd steer clear of the same mistakes the conservatives made. In the United Kingdom, I'm Eric Morris for the Center County Report. We'll be bringing you live coverage on election night. We'll air a special report as the polls close at 8 p.m., then bring you hourly live updates with race results throughout the evening. You can also get updates on our Center County Report social media channels that night. The preliminary hearing for two former Penn State football players facing rape charges has been rescheduled. Originally set for tomorrow, it's now scheduled for November 13th. Kavion Keyes and Jamail Lyons are accused of raping a 17-year-old at an on-campus apartment on, in July and recording part of the assault. Lyons is also accused of indecently assaulting another female the same night. They're both out on bail. The FBI is asking for help to identify a vandalism suspect in State College. The agency released these images. It says the outside of a U.S. Department of Defense contractor building on Science Park Road was vandalized with pro-Palestinian messages several times over the summer. The FBI is offering up to $10,000 as a reward for info that leads to a conviction and arrest. Still to come on the Center County Report, we check the seven-day forecast. Plus, free parking in downtown State College. Find out when. Also coming up... See how a bunch of puppies in State College are being trained for a very important mission. A new pizza shop is in the process of opening its doors in downtown State College. Rico's Pizza, a Connecticut-based chain, recently got its liquor license transferred by a request granted through the Borough Council. The chain is known for its thin crust pies and plans to open the shop as soon as it can on South Beavers, sorry, South Pew Street and East College Avenue. Downtown State College will offer free holiday parking again this year. The program runs from November 25th to January 4th. The first part of that period until December 22nd will offer a two hour grace period on garage parking and meter violations will be forgiven up to three times. After 5 p.m., street and lot parking will also be free. Unlimited free parking starts on December 23rd and continues through January 4th. Call them puppies with a purpose. A branch of a Pennsylvania service dog organization is training dogs on Penn State's campus. Reporter Madison Schmidt takes a look. When the vests go on, it's time to work. Roar for More, a branch of the Susquehanna Service Dogs Organization, has been training puppies on Penn State's campus since 2014. The organization acts as a unique opportunity for students and community members to raise and train puppies with the intention of the dogs becoming companions for people with disabilities. We raised them on campus for about a year and a half. Um, and there's three levels of classes. It's like the ESC puppies, they're like the babies. Um, and then there's purple and green and the older dogs are the green puppies. Students and community volunteers spent this night at the hub where a young class of 12 week old puppies learned how to use elevators and crawl under tables, all while gaining valuable socialization skills in a stimulating environment. While each dog is trained with the same fundamentals and skills, trainers who work with them get to evaluate which behaviors the dogs enjoy most and what tasks or areas they excel in. A lot of them, you know, go on to be service dogs, which is awesome, and those that don't make it go on to be, like, work for the CIA or work in arson detection. We have a dog that's uh, doing electric electronics detection. As the little puppies wrapped up their latest training, some of the older dogs arrived for their sessions. This is Mickey. He's a yellow lab and he's been training to be a service dog for just over a year and a half now. The night ended with a family photo on the hub stairs with tails wagging and smiles all around. In University Park, I'm Madison Schmidt with the Center County Report. If you're interested in learning more about service dog training and roar for more, Visit the group's Facebook page or the Susquehanna Service Dogs website.
Well, if you're looking to take the pup out for a walk this afternoon or really any outdoor activities you may have planned, it should be a nice afternoon. Take a look live on our camera out at the Penn State golf courses right now. We had some more blue skies earlier on and now we're beginning to see some clouds filtering in. Those clouds I do think will stick through us through most of the afternoon hours. A temperature of 57 degrees right now and across the area we're in the upper 50s, 60s in some areas and we're even in the upper 60s in Erie and Pittsburgh too. But when we zoom out you can really see this area of warmth across the Midwest and this slowly but surely over the next 24 hours or so is going to work its way into our area and you see some of these numbers 75 in Omaha 78 in Tulsa those upper 70s will be making it to us with the warm front that's moving through right now not only are we seeing some increased cloud cover we're also seeing a few isolated showers across western Pennsylvania and then the northern tier at this hour but I do think those stay very isolated and in future cast I think they stay north of I-80 so we should be dry here in State College, really through the afternoon hours. Clouds will limit our high temperatures, though. I think we only get up to a highs in the low 60s, which still is above average when you consider we're at the end of October, right? And there won't be any rain today either. That's That would make today the 16th day in a row without any measurable precipitation in State College. That Measurable meaning more than one one hundredth of an inch of rain. The last time we had a stretch that long was last June. And for that reason, we have drought alert, in effect, across the Commonwealth. You could see southwestern Pennsylvania in a state of drought right now, as well as southeastern Pennsylvania. And actually, there in Philadelphia, they're on a 30-day streak without measurable precipitation. And that is a new record for a dry streak there in Philadelphia. Tomorrow, I think we remain dry here in State College. Temperatures will climb into the middle and even upper 70s with a mix of clouds and sun sunshine, so definitely above average for this time of year. We stay dry and mostly sunny through Halloween, but that's when things begin to change a little bit. We have this cold front that approaches late overnight Thursday into Friday morning. That will bring with it the chance for an isolated shower. I do think they'll be less widespread than this model is leading on to, but the good news you can see here, we clear out for Saturday, and that's just in time for the big matchup, Penn State versus Ohio State at Beaver Stadium. Of course, if you're heading out for trick-or-treating here, we have to do a festive forecast with the dancing mummy guy, right? Uh, temperatures will be in the upper 70s, close to 80 degrees in the afternoon. And in fact, the daily record in State College is 81 degrees. So we'll be watching very closely to see if we beat that record. And then as we get into the overnight hours, temperatures dip into the upper 60s and we could see that chance for a shower. Here's the seven day forecast. Lots of sunshine around through this week. Temperatures return to mild after that cold front rolls through. So it's looking like a great forecast for Halloween and for the game as well. Now that is some crazy weather this time of year, especially for Halloween. I remember growing up in the Northeast and trick-or-treating through Hurricane Sandy. How about you, Antonio? Yeah, there was not a tree in sight. That hurricane was crazy, but still <laughs> Halloween is a special time. All right, well next up, Kenny has the latest in sports. Next in sports, the Nittany Lions faced adversity on the road and won. Now, the biggest test of the season is here and Penn State basketball gets into some preseason action as they get ready for the season opener. I'm Kenny Ojukari with sports. Penn State has a monster game this week, a rivalry game. Ohio State comes to town, but the gutsy Lions are still unbeaten and ranked third in the country. They faced Wisconsin on Saturday in Madison, and Nick Singleton got the party started with this outrageous touchdown grab to go up 7-3. But quarterback Drew Aller left the game with an injury just before halftime. Bo Prabula, next in line. The defense, they would help out. Jalen Reed, two words, game changer. Pick six, 14-10. Now this is what I call tricky cuddle Nicky. Katron Allen and Prabula would swap positions and Allen was gone. 28-13 was the final, Penn State moves to 7-0, and Coach James Franklin raved about the team's resilience. Next man up, uh, no excuses. Uh, I just thought it was a gutsy culture win uh, from my perspective. Franklin says he's not sure if Aller will be healthy enough to start on Saturday, and it'll be a game-time decision. All eyes on this game, it'll be the center of the college football universe. ESPN's college game day will be outside the BJC, and they'll have a neighbor, Fox Big Noon Kickoff. Penn State expects traffic to be crazy, so the university says get there early, especially with Donald Trump also attending. Kickoff is at noon, 
and you can listen to the game live on Penn State Com Radio with the broadcast team at Beaver Stadium. Over to high school football, Penn Cambria ended the season undefeated after a win over Bishop Guilfoyle, and State College took down Bishop McDevitt in a shootout. After the whistle reporter, Brian Portney, has more on that game. The Little Lions started off the game scoring 21 unanswered points over Bishop McDevitt. But that wouldn't be enough to put the Crusaders away. I'm exhausted right now, not going to lie, but uh, extremely happy. Uh, proud of our kids, the effort, the adjustments that they made throughout the day. Um, it, you know, McDevitt gave us a lot of different looks defensively, and, and our kids just found the next thing to work. State College wide receiver Ty Solazer had three receiving touchdowns. A huge night indeed for him. We just got either a share or outright mid pen, so that feels absolutely amazing. But we definitely are looking ahead to the playoffs. Um, we got a lot ready, and we're getting ready, and I feel like we're ready to get into the playoffs. Now, you know that this game had 113 points, but I bet you didn't know that it spanned exactly three and a half hours long. The Little Lions' defensive highlight of the night showed Michael Gall taking one back to the house for a pick six. And I'm running up to go make a play, and you know, it was a bad ball. Fell right in my hands, and I took that, and I just took off. I mean, I slid. I wasn't letting no one catch me. I mean, this is my moment in my senior night. Uh, this is a moment that's always going to stick out to me and the fans. So it was just, just an instant play that I, mean, I just made. State College held on for the close victory, and they will face the winner of the Erie and McDowell game in two weeks to open the playoffs. You can check out highlights from this Friday's top local high school football games on our sports show After the Whistle. That's Friday live at 11.30 p.m. on our YouTube channel. And Penn State men's hockey enjoyed a series sweep over St. Lawrence over the weekend. On Friday night, the Lions found themselves trailing 2-1 in the first four minutes. But goals by Reese Lawback and Keaton Peters sealed the 3-2 win. In game two, Penn State cruised to a 3-1 victory with goals in each period. The blue and white climbed back into the latest USCHO rankings at number 18. Penn State men's soccer ends the regular season on the road next weekend. Saturday was the final regular season home game as the Nittany Lions took on Wisconsin. It was senior night for four Lions, but Wisconsin forced the issue early, scoring a goal in the eighth minute. Penn State was able to put up more shots in this game, eight to Wisconsin's three. But that wouldn't be enough as the Badgers scored again right before the half. The Nittany Lions lost 2-0. Next up is a road game at Northwestern on Sunday. And that's all for sports. Back to you, Antonio and Grace. Thank you, Kenny. Now, coming up next, we get ready for Halloween with the 76th Annual Halloween Parade in downtown State College. And with just two days till Halloween, Center County is gearing up for the spookiest day of the season. On Sunday, Center Region's Parks and Recreation hosted the 76th Annual Halloween Parade in downtown State College, handing out prizes for costumes in six different categories. And trick-or-treating for the Center County Region is Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. The exceptions are Burnside and Curtin Townships, both of which have no set time. That's all for today's newscast. We hope you'll join us Friday for our next local news update. And you can join us and follow us anytime for breaking news on our Center County Report X. And you can see our stories from our Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, and our website. Have a good afternoon.